Tasty Ball. Cook up some of the freshest serves and serve up some of the sickest spikes in this wonderful new turn-based RPG by Wishes Unlimited. Creators of Wonder Song and Chicory. I'm not too familiar with those. But more importantly for me, it's being published by Cly, who I am very familiar with. Now I know what some of you are already thinking with this game. That this is just another take on the monster catching formula that everyone and their mother already knows about. A large number of various creatures that you collect and bond with before eventually fighting rival teams, and through enough battles, the creatures transform into strong versions of themselves to repeat the cycle again. Oh, and the ever-present alternate coloration of these creatures that has dedicated players emotional when they see one. While all of that does kind of apply to this game, I gotta say this is one of the craziest takes on this formula I've seen in a long while. First off, this is turn-based volleyball with monsters. Need I say more? Secondly, the mechanics that this game has come together to make a battle system that I thoroughly enjoy, to a bit of a concerning degree. So, allow me to take a moment to break it down for you. As a Beastie Ball coach, it's your job to build the best Beastie Ball team around in order to climb the ranks. That means exploring the world, finding all sorts of beasties, and recruiting them to your team. Though in order to recruit them, you'll likely have to beat them in a game of Beastie Ball. So, how does one play Beastie Ball? Each side of the court is separated into four squares, with up to two beasties on each side. Beasties placed in the front row deal increased damage when launching the ball, while beasties placed in the back row take less damage when receiving the ball. If the ball targets an empty spot of the court, that team scores a point. The ball will also drop if the BC that received the ball runs out of stamina. So the name of the game is all about planning where to position your team when possible. Not just to protect your side from spike attempts, but to also get more value out of your plays. Plays are essentially moves that each BC can use at certain times, with each BC being able to learn three plays at any given time. There's no limit to the amount of times you can use a play per match. A fact I used to spam healing plays till my team was back to full stamina. But there is a limit of 3 actions per turn when on the offense, with the final action requiring the ball to be sent back, and only one action while on defense. That, and each play is defined as either an attack, support, pass, or defense, meaning you can only use them when called for. Though there are a few plays that all beasts have access to which are found beside it such as free ball, volley, block, and others. This all sounds cool and all, but doesn't this seem pretty complex? Especially when most of these games are just simply select the corresponding moves to defeat your opponent? While that might seem true on the surface, you gotta remember that the complexity of RPG games like these often comes from move selection, type advantage, resistances, ability stat building, egg collecting, and all that other nonsense. A lot of that stuff you don't often consider until you're deep in the game's mechanics, which can make investing in it long term a little tricky for some players, especially when the creature count is so high you could get a degree learning all of them. Nah, for Beastie Ball here, you'll need to keep three major things in mind for each Beastie, body, mind, and spirit, which affects the attack and defense of each type. Sure, it's not 100% rock, paper, scissors, given that every beastie specializes in either the attack or defense of each type, but the game is laying out everything you need to know on the table. And I do quite mean everything on the table, since the game isn't shy about telling you things you wouldn't expect. From how much damage each action would likely cause, to the move list and stats of each player regardless of their side. All you have to do is use that knowledge to strategize where to anticipate the ball and how to aim for victory. The Kickstarter campaign even advertises that all BCG recruit can be competitively viable, helping to promote team building rather than finding the right one with the right hidden stats. There are no random elements or luck involved so a random crit won't absolutely ruin your day, or having a move miss multiple times because 80% accuracy is not being nice that day, and best of all, Level isn't the major deciding factor on whether you'll win or lose, since the name of the game isn't to KO the opposition, but to score points. So a level 10 team can be just as viable as a level 50 one. Assuming they have mercy on you, of course. 
For my time with the demo, there were a lot of things I quite enjoyed. From the customization of menus and player character, to how the game has its own wiki built into the game itself, which is awesome. Though one of my favorite aspects, which some might not agree with initially, is that you have to work for the opportunity to recruit a beastie. Every non-numbered beastie has a specific condition in order to possibly recruit them. You learn what these conditions are for each beastie through researching them, essentially battling them and seeing each action they'll perform. While this does sometimes make it a chore to get the specific beastie you want, it also bypasses the RNG mess of constantly throwing items at a creature for the chance to get it. Remember, no random elements or RNG to speak of. Not to mention, even if you obliterate the beastie you wanted, they'll still be willing to join your team. So long as you met the condition before you accidentally smashed your face in, of course. Which is a heck of a lot easier compared to whittling a creature's HP to near zero, just so that the item to capture them actually has a chance to work. I personally think Beastie Ball has a lot of potential to stand out amongst the sea of creature collecting RPGs. Though of course, the game is still being developed as we speak. I mean, do these systems have the potential to stand up to both late game and player versus player? I think it has a chance. But I can't exactly say that their main dish is already worth 5 stars on presentation description alone, especially when I haven't even tasted the real thing yet. Though I can certainly say their appetizer has definitely left me excited for more, given how well they've tuned the systems for this demo alone. Now I'm just curious about dessert! Being a game that's currently in alpha, and being funded on Kickstarter, you can back the game and earn some nifty rewards in the process. Most of it is merch, but if you're a big spender, you can go all the way for the crazy rewards such as designing your own Beastie Ball team. Though all I really care about is the Spreco pin. Seriously, my one weakness with Kickstarter campaigns is when an enamel pin is added to the rewards. Trust me, 9 times out of 10, I back it immediately. If you aren't able to back the game, especially if this video comes a little late, You'll be happy to know that a lot of awesome stretch goals have already been reached. Not just online matchmaking or a new bonus area, but also both a randomizer and an Iron Man mode. Developers taking note of the popularity of both Nuzlocke and randomizer challenges in order to add their own official version? I quite like it. Though I think it's going to be really sad to hear stories of how people's favorite BC wound up getting wiped, never recovering and being forced to leave the team entirely. If anything like that happened to me with these two, I'd probably commit unspeakable horrors. Or just Alt F4 like nothing ever happened. If you like what you see, but want to see it for yourself, don't forget there's a demo on Steam you can play right this moment. The developers advertise only 30 minutes of content, but there's a lot of fun to be had. Not just with practicing with the battle system, but seeing what team you'll use in the full version. Oh, and I guess looking for sparkles to show off to anyone interested, especially those in the Wishes Unlimited Discord server. That's all I really have to say on the game for now. I could talk about other elements like the relationship system or how ranked matches work, but I think some of that stuff is better left for players to mess about with on their own through the demo. Plus, I could talk about all that stuff when the game actually launches. For now though, I'll be waiting to see what the Kickstarter updates have in store. And hey, if things go well, we might even see this bad boy make it onto the Switch. I'll see you on the court when Beastie Ball launches. I don't know when, but I'll see you there. <laughs>